It was a four-story fall from the top of the roof to the concrete pavement below. He had just passed his 29th birthday. texting each other all day. His name was Tom, and he was my life. At the beginning of our relationship, Tom and I bonded over the many similarities we had. We both grew up listening to country music, Garth Brooks is our favorite country artist, and somehow we both agreed that dance is our favorite country song. If there was ever a person to truly emulate the lyrics of this song, it was Tom. Holding, Holding you, I held, I held everything for a moment, for a moment. wasn't, wasn't I the king? Casper, Montana is probably not the easiest place to have a child grow up who is gay. Our community is, uh, you don't want to say backwoodsy, but you know, they're, they're rural and so they don't accept people who are different. The day Shane was born, I had to get a special leave from the hospital to go sign my divorce papers. So I was the talk of the hospital because we're a small little town and, and <laughs> that was kind of the, the special moment in my life. I think that, you know, they might have gotten married too soon, possibly, and they kind of just grew apart. My dad, he's a character. He was a wrestler in college, and he loves hunting. I would go hunting with my dad, and all of a sudden, after he'd shoot a deer, I would end up in tears, because I kept thinking Bambi. Like, my dad just shot Bambi. After a while, he stopped taking me hunting. I made a deal with my dad growing up that I would try all different sports. He tried baseball, he tried basketball, he tried them all. I remember one loss they had, and Shane hardly played at all, but boy, he took it hard, and that was pretty cute, but he wasn't much of a contributor. My first memory of Shane was at a school play, and he was just singing, dancing, whatever he could do to entertain, he was doing it. We had made a car. We used red glitter, and Shane wanted that car like none other. He was in fourth grade, and I remember him telling his teacher that when he graduated from high school, he's going to California. And I just thought, why is that, you know, that, that just seems so strange. I particularly remember him singing Barbra Streisand. He was running around the room in circles and singing right in everyone's face. You don't bring me flowers. Like just so charismatic and so unafraid. I was in elementary school and what I would do sometimes is I didn't want to go to bed. My mom would tell me to go to bed and then I would sneak out 
and sit behind her recliner and watch the TV because I wanted to kind of be a little rebel. One time she was watching the movie Philadelphia. Finally got to the end of the movie and I, I knew that this guy was gay and I knew that he was sick and he was dying because of being gay. And that really, it struck a chord with me because I knew that I was like him. That guy liked another guy, and look what happened. He kept getting thinner, he kept getting pale, and there was like sores on his face and his body. And I just remember thinking that that's, that's gonna be me, that's gonna happen to me. He got quieter, and he wasn't as fun to be around. You could tell that something was always on his mind, something was always bothering him, but you never knew what it was. One night, I remember Shane coming into my room, and he said, Mom, I'm dying of AIDS. And I said, Honey, wh why are you saying that? And he goes, Well, because of that movie. And I said, Well, honey, you, ha you don't have AIDS. And that's when I really noticed Shane starting to have panic attacks. He felt like he couldn't breathe. He would, and he would have to say, You've got to put a sack over your head. He didn't like doing it, but when he was at my house, we put a sack over his head. So as time went on, I would sneak into one of the bedrooms in our house and I would, I would dial 911 and tell them that I was dying. And all of a sudden I see these flashing lights in the driveway and I thought, what is going on? And I go upstairs and here is the ambulance saying that somebody was in distress in this home. Somebody was choking, somebody was suffocating. It led to her being like, you know, Shane, you, God damn it, the cops are here again. From sixth grade till I got that kid through high school, I didn't know if I was gonna survive. I bet 10, 15 times he called 911. The money <laughs> that it you know, cost me through the years, it was just, uh, it was very stressful. But it was real to him, and I knew it was real to him, and I wanted him to feel he was safe. She finally decided that this is maybe more serious than she can handle, so she set me up with a therapist. When Shane got done with the session, he asked me to come in, and he said, your son just needs to admit to himself that he's gay and everything will be fine. And I said, how can you say that? He's not gay. And the Dr. Hauser said, well, you know, that's something you're gonna have to come to peace with. I always suspected, I'm not gonna lie to you, it took me a couple days to process and the thing it come down to is I ain't making any more kits. I better stay in good at the ones I got. And I love them unconditionally, so it, it, it just doesn't matter. It's kind of funny now that here I was, a little boy, on my knees praying to God that I wouldn't be gay. And there was another little boy 1,500 miles away in Indiana doing the same thing. Knox, Indiana is not the easiest place for a gay kid to grow up. It's very homogenous, not much diversity there. I knew Tom when both of our brothers were in Boy Scouts together. Everybody loved him. He was just the popular kid. He had a lot of empathy. I'll never forget the day my mom died Tom was the first person to come over to my house. He walked in the door and he was, you know, he was crying. You know, I almost thought he's sadder than I am. Tom's mother and father each had children from previous marriages. So Tom was the only child between the two parents and he was the center of attention in the family. He was the center of attention everywhere he was. Tom would always be playing the piano at home, singing, dancing around. Come on, baby. He was doing his tricks on the trampoline. He was always performing. For Tom, there was never any such thing as too much. Tom's dad, he was a simple blue collar worker, came home late, got up really early the next day and you know did it again. And both of his parents sacrificed a lot for Tom's happiness. His mom took a job as a janitor so that Tom could go to Culver. Not many parents would do that, would start cleaning toilets so their son could have the best education. Tom's dad was in Vietnam, and that's why he, he went to Vietnam when he was in high school. He definitely respected his dad for, for fighting for his country. I think as Tom got older, as Tom became his own person, it just became difficult for them to connect. Tom was always very adamant about saying what he believed in, and it didn't work with his dad. And it's sad, but I really think that if more people would give me a chance to be their friend. I can show them that it's just because I'm not exactly like them that I'm still a good person. Welcome, come here. Can you bring your ready, please? Hi, how's it going? Oh, great, thanks. 
Uh, what? <laughs> I'm just coming to get the usual. Okay. 